Hi there. My name is Brooke Krajancic and I'm a PhD student at the Stanford Computational Imaging Lab. Today I'll be talking about gaze contingent stereo rendering for improving depth perception in virtual and augmented reality systems. Augmented and virtual reality, or AR and VR, are next generation computing platforms with the potential to revolutionize many fields, including education, training, design and medicine, just to name a few. However, for many of these applications, it is desirable, if not critical, that they create perceptually realistic visual experiences. This means the ability to recreate all of the visual and depth cues that we as humans use to observe the scene around us. Taking a look at some of these cues, we can loosely categorize them into two bins, pictorial and non-pictorial cues. Pictorial cues are those that we can extract from a 2D image. They give us some information about the underlying 3D structure it is portraying. Computer graphics has solved the rendering of a lot of these, including occlusion, shading, perspective and texturing, but there are many, many others. Non-pictorial cues, on the other hand, refer to the information that we can extract only by existing in a 3D environment. These are things like retinal blur, a depth cue that has seen a lot of attention recently, caused because our eyes have a limited depth of field. Researchers have proposed various approaches based on light field, very focal and multifocal displays to properly render retinal blur in AR and VR. But by contrast, little attention has been given to disparity rendering. Very much like how stereo cameras discern depth, the horizontal separation of our eyes allows our brain to use the relative shift in the respective 2D retinal images to give us a strong indication of the absolute depth to objects. Across all depths, disparity is a more important depth cue than retinal blur, yet disparity rendering has largely been viewed as a solved problem. Most conventional AR and VR systems consist of some kind of near-eye displays, magnified by lenses to create a virtual image at some distance, often one to two meters or optical infinity. Now say I wanted to make this pixel appear at some distance closer than that. Conventional disparity rendering uses the geometry of the system, including the user's interpupillary distance or IPD, in the form of matrices to essentially trace out a line between that position and the centers of each of the eyes. The points in which these rays intersect the screens tells us the pixel coordinates to light up on each display, such that the light that lands on the retina gives us the perception of a point at that depth. However, part of this approach is physiologically inaccurate, specifically the use of the center points of the eyes. Literature from the mid 1900s shows that the optical centers of our eyes, also known as the no parallax point or the center of perspective, is slightly forward offset from the center of rotation. Earlier this year, Conrad et al used this literature to estimate its position, showing that as the eye rotates, this seemingly small offset creates a significant enough change in perspective to be visible in VR. They referred to this effect as ocular parallax and showed its ability to assist in ordinal depth perception. However, all experiments but one were conducted monocularly. They were not able to show any noticeable effect in binocular viewing conditions, nor on absolute depth perception. In this work, we show for the first time that this offset position of the no parallax point does in fact have an effect on absolute depth perception in binocular viewing conditions through the way in which we should be rendering binocular disparity. As such, today I will talk about four main contributions. Firstly, I'll explain why stereo rendering should in fact be gaze contingent to more accurately emulate how disparity behaves when we look at real objects. Then I will describe a psychophysical experiment we did to measure a relevant parameter for this rendering approach. And finally, I will describe two user experiments we conducted to show that making stereo rendering gaze contingent does in fact improve absolute depth perception in AR and VR. The first shows an improvement in shape perception in VR, and the second, an improvement in the alignment of real and virtual objects in AR. But first, to understand why conventional stereo rendering is inaccurate, we can look to the key axes and points in the human eye. Currently, disparity is calculated by tracing the optical axis of the eye, or the line that connects the anterior vertex of the cornea, B, with the center of rotation, C. However, the center of our visual field actually aligns with the phobia, shown here, F, which on the retina is slightly offset in the temporal direction. So it's actually the visual axis that defines our gaze position, P where alpha is typically five degrees in the nasal and three degrees in the inferior directions. These two axes intersect twice at the front and back nodal points, N and N prime respectively. These points are not marked by any key anatomical feature, 
but the front nodal point is understood as the no parallax point of the eye and is defined by its offset from the center of rotation, the distance NC. Now, while a user verges far, measuring the distance between their pupils, or the, the IPD, serves as a way to approximate the centers of rotation with respect to the center of their head. While at this gaze position, this would be the distance between the no parallax point, we can see that as the user verges closer, the points shift inwards, meaning that true IPD is actually gaze contingent. This means that the geometry of the disparity calculation changes depending on where you are looking. A seemingly small shift, but failing to account for it can lead to significant errors in disparity calculation, as simulated here for an average observer. This has the effect of distorting the depth space at those closer distances and leading to objects appearing closer than intended by the rendering. This is where gaze contingent stereo rendering can help. With access to gaze position, as is possible with increasing use of inbuilt eye trackers, we can modify the matrices used in stereo rendering to trace our center of perspective to be at the front nodal point and point it along the visual axis, then proceed as before. But to do this, we need to know a user's NC distance. So we first conducted a psychophysical experiment to measure this for several users. The experiment utilizes a gaze contingent occlusion effect first described by Bingham in 1992. Since the no parallax point is located in front of the center of rotation of the eye, rotating the eye will cause changing amounts of occlusion for two surfaces separated in depth. We set this up in a monocular controlled experiment using a head stabilizer and a bite bar, aligning a front half sur surface such that when the subject looks straight ahead, it fully occluded the red extent displayed on a rear located LCD. The subject was instructed to rotate their eye 30 degrees to a fixation target when they were suddenly able to identify the presence of that hidden extent in the periphery. We then measured the distance that we could move this red extent towards the right and the subject still be able to detect its presence. This distance was then converted to the NC distance using the geometry of the setup. Full details are included in our paper, but we measured an average distance of 7.29 millimeters for our eight participants. This was not surprising, roughly agreeing with the anecdotal evidence previously found in the literature. But what was surprising was that we observed a variation of 3.5 millimeters amongst our subjects, indicating that there may be value in measuring and accounting for individual variation. However, with the measurement procedure currently being impractical, we continue to model an average observer with this distance. We use this value to test our gaze contingent stereo rendering approach with two user experiments. The first of which used a Vive Pro VR headset to investigate the effect of depth rendering on shape distortion. This is based on the hypothesis that if depth rendering is in fact being distorted by conventional stereo rendering, then this will distort the aspect of a 3D shape. Since VR lacks an absolute reference that we could use to show the metric structure of the target shape we are trying to render, we looked for one that could be identifiable only by the ratio of its dimensions, like this cube. So for this purpose, we used a random dot stereogram stimulus. This is a stereo pair of images of random dots, which when viewed without a stereo display, just looks like the static that you used to get on old TVs. But zooming in and showing them with anaglyph you can visualize that some of the dots have actually been shifted left and right by a calculated amount, producing the sensation of a specific depth, either popping in or jutting out of the display level. We use such a pattern to render a triangle wave demonstrated here in anaglyph. But if you don't have a pair of glasses handy, it kind of looks like the accordion folds that you can make in a piece of paper. Importantly, we render this pattern such that the amplitude and depth is half the period laterally of the peaks as illustrated in this side view schematic. Thus, if the depth rendering is physiologically correct, the dihedral angle of the peaks and troughs should be at 90 degrees. However, if the user's IPD is being overestimated, as we predict is the case for shallow depths without gaze contingent rendering, then the depth space would be perceived as stretched compared to that intended, resulting in these angles appearing smaller than 90 degrees. As such, we showed users two identical triangle wave patterns horizontally side by side, one with and one without our gaze contingent rendering. And nine subjects were asked to choose which of the two randomly ordered patterns, so left or right, exhibited angles closer to 90 degrees. However, by design, the rendering of this pattern is sensitive to any inaccuracy in disparity calculation, including that that would be caused by an inaccurate initial measurement of the user's IPD. As such, we conduct a user in the loop IPD calibration task, setting the pattern two meters away. 
This is far enough, such that the separation of the node parallax points and centers of rotation are close enough, such that the gaze contingent approach should be indistinguishable from conventional stereo rendering. We asked users to perfectly calibrate their IPD for this distance by adjusting the pattern to exhibit 90 degree angles. In this way, we can compare to the best case scenario possible with a fixed IPD. Upon conducting the trials, we found that patterns at a depth of 0.7 meters were not significantly different. However, as the user verged closer to 0.5 and 0.3 meters, our rendering approach was found to show angles significantly closer to 90 degrees. This shows accounting for the shift of the node parallax point in stereo rendering is important for portraying the correct depth scaling needed to convey relative distances and shapes of objects within a scene, particularly when a user is verging to a close object or a familiar shape. The second user experiment we conducted investigated the effect of gaze contingent rendering on the alignment of real and virtual objects in AR. This is an important application, sometimes even life critical. I don't know about you, but I would hope that the data can be aligned with pretty high accuracy before I let my surgeon use AR to decide where to cut into me. And while judging shape in VR requires higher level spatial reasoning, we expected that the distortion would be even easier to, to detect in tasks where the relative displacement of two surfaces alone is a sufficient cue. So we explored this hypothesis using a Microsoft One uh, HoloLens AR headset. We rendered a flat surface textured with a playing card image at various distances. A physical target was placed at the same distance to the user from the user, but with a small lateral displacement, just such that the virtual and physical objects would appear side by side. And a headrest was used to keep the, the subject's head, head fixed with respect to the physical target. Similarly to the VR user experiment, we also wanted to demonstrate that a more accurate calibration of the HoloLens could not sufficiently improve the alignment accuracy. As such, the subjects viewed the stimulus in three rendering conditions. HoloLens rendering, which was that provided by the mixed reality SDK in Unity. Fine tune rendering, in which similar to the VR experiment, we conducted an initial user in the loop IPD calibration, asking them to align their virtual target with the physical one at a distance of two meters and our gaze contingent rendering. In the first set of trials, we compared HoloLens to fine tuned rendering modes asking subjects to identify which of the two display modes provided the best alignment in depth with the physical target. We found that at all distances, the fine tune mode was selected as significantly more accurate than HoloLens rendering. Though it's not hard to argue that a per user calibration would provide a better experience, it's likely impractical for many use cases. But for this experiment, however, it gives us a better baseline as to how well we can do with the conventional approach of using a fixed IPD. So as such, we compared this mode to our gaze contingent rendering in a subsequent block of trials. At a target distance of two meters, the rendering modes were indistinguishable. Now this is reassuring since again, that initial calibration task had the user fine tune their IPD such that both rendering modes were both equivalent and accurate at that specific depth. But while the difference between the modes was not significant enough to be observed at 1.5 meters, at one and particularly 0.5, meters our gaze contingent approach was chosen to give significantly more accurate alignment. This confirms that accounting for the gaze contingent shift of the no parallax point is crucial for accurate reproduction of stereoscopic disparity, particularly for arms reach based tasks. But overall, what we've shown here is somewhat surprising. We've known how to do stereo rendering for ages, and we've been doing it in the context of AR and VR for a while now, to the point where it was largely thought of as a solved problem. But with the emergence of wearable eye tracking in commercial AR and VR systems, we are entering a new era of development. Not only can this technology improve user experience and visual comfort with techniques such as foveated or gaze contingent very focal display modes, but also enable us to account for other dynamic gaze effects, such as gaze contingent disparity. We pave the way for new research directions in perceptually realistic rendering. For example, the centers of the pupils actually shift with dilation meaning that IPD can also change with the brightness or emotion changes. It would also be interesting to combine this work to model and correct optical distortion in a gaze contingent manner. But with this work, we show that there is still room for improvement in stereo and disparity rendering, particularly as display resolutions continue to improve. Such fine tuning will be important for depth perception and perceptual realism in these emerging wearable computing systems.